young Chinese software engineer in Hangzhou, chanced upon an essay about lip-syncing technology. Its premise is relatively simple, using a computer program to match lip movements with speech recordings. But his grandfather, who died nearly a decade earlier, came to mind. Can I see Grandpa again using this technology? Yu Jialin asked himself. His journey to recreate his grandfather, documented in April by investigative journalist Tang Yucheng for the state-owned magazine Sixth Tone, is one of several accounts now surfacing in China of people using artificial intelligence to resurrect the dead. Mixing an assortment of emerging AI technologies, people in the country have been building chat programs, known as grief bots, with the personalities and memories of the deceased, hoping for a chance to speak to their loved ones again. For you, they presented a chance to speak his final words to the man who helped raise him. The software engineer, now 29, told Tang that he was 17 when his grandfather died. He still regrets two instances when he was harsh to his grandfather. Yu yelled at the older man for interrupting a gaming session once, and on another occasion told his grandfather to stop picking him up from school, Tang reported. His family stopped mentioning his grandfather after he died, he told Tang. Everyone in the family was trying their best to forget Grandpa rather than remember him, Yu said. The grief bot concept has been trialed for years, largely as AI-powered programs that learn how to mimic human beings through their memorabilia, photos, and recordings. But generative AI's rapid advancement in the last year has pushed the power and accessibility of grief bots to a whole new level. Older models required vast sets of data. Now, Layman or lone engineers like you can feed language models with tidbits of a person's past and recreate almost exactly how they look, speak, and think. You only need to tweak the systems a little bit in order to loosely get a 99% similarity to your person. The stark differences will be minimal, Lou said. For you to teach his AI model what his grandfather was like, he retrieved a trove of old letters from his grandmother. She'd exchanged them with Yu's grandfather when they were young, and they revealed a side to the man that even you hadn't glimpsed as a child. The software engineer dug up photos and videos shot more than a decade ago and found text messages his grandfather sent him. Yet even given weeks of testing and training, the tech has a long way to go if humans expect something akin to Black Mirror's robot replicas. Yu's bot was clearly limited and took 10 minutes to respond to each prompt. Hey, Grandpa, guess who I am? Yu asked the program at one point. Grandpa delivered a generic response. Who you are is not important at all. Life is a beautiful miracle, the bot wrote back. But as you fed the AI with more information about his grandfather, it started to show a more accurate representation of the man's habits and preferences. For example, it remembered his grandfather's favorite show. Happy Tea House went off the air, you told the chatbot. That's a shame. The show I want to watch the most is no longer available. I would have liked to watch a few more episodes, the grandfather bot replied. That was the moment when Yu felt he'd gotten somewhere. The program was eventually sophisticated enough that Yu felt confident he could show his work to his grandmother. She watched silently as her late husband responded to her questions, then thanked her grandson, stood up, and left the room. Yu told his grandmother needed the chatbot to process her emotions and mourn. Otherwise, why would she thank me, he said. As for himself, he declined to share his intimate conversations with his grandfather bot. But I think my grandfather forgave me in the end. As generative AI gains traction in China, so have stories of new grief bots. Another Chinese man who used AI to resurrect a loved one, a 24-year-old Shanghai blogger going by the name Wu Wuliu, went viral on social media in March. Like Yu's grandfather bot, WU's bot produced limited responses. But I feel good being able to look at grandma and talk more with her, he said. Earlier versions of grief bots have established footholds elsewhere in the world. Several companies and research projects in the U.S. have offered grief bots, such as Replica, which now markets itself as a social AI app. In Canada, a man named Joshua Barbeau digitally remade his girlfriend in 2021 using Project December, an older program built with the predecessor to current GPT software. Then there's the South Korean documentary, Meeting You, which featured a young mother tearfully reuniting with her deceased seven-year-old daughter in virtual reality. In conclusion, about you, Griefbots, you says, I was afraid of relying on this bot too much. 
I was afraid that I would not be able to move on if I kept conversing with it. These emotions might have overwhelmed me too much to work and live my life. Two weeks after bringing the grief bot online, it was time to make the hard call. Gazing wistfully at his computer screen, you mouthed the words, Bye, Grandpa, and hit delete. 